Dear students, welcome to the session on Fourier transform. In this session, we are going to see the basic definition of Fourier transforms and we are going to solve a simple problem. The contents of this unit is statement of Fourier integral theorem, Fourier transform pair, Fourier sine and cosine transforms, properties, transform of simple functions and Percival's identity. Fourier transform. Let us consider a function f of x. If you apply Fourier transform capital F, my output is going to be capital f of s that means my input is in x and my output is in s the fourier transform of f of x is capital f of s the formula for fourier transform is 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f of x e power isx dx so i can represent this as capital f of f of x that is equal to capital f of small s the inverse fourier transform for this capital f of s is small f of x so my small f of x is equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to infinity capital f of s e power minus isx ds so it is easy to remember fourier transform means dx inverse fourier transform means ds for fourier transform e power isx inverse fourier transform e power minus isx for fourier transform we have f of x here we have capital f of s in inverse fourier transform and remember students in fourier series we are dealing with 0 comma 2 pi 0 comma 2 l minus pi 2 pi minus l to l etc but in fourier transform we are always moving over the real line that is from minus infinity to plus infinity next we are going to use parcels identity on for your transform it is going to be very simple minus infinity to infinity modulus of f of x whole square dx is equal to minus infinity to infinity modulus of capital f of s whole square ds the next part of the unit we are going to use fourier cosine transform we say it as fct and fourier sine transform fst so fourier transform of a function f of x is capital f if i want to represent Fourier cosine transform of a function f of x, I am going to say this as fc. Similarly, Fourier sine transform of a function f of x is fs of f of x. So, I am going to mention this as fc of s and for Fourier sine transform fs of s. Now, if there is only one function, suppose I am applying Fourier cosine transform, I will say this as fc of s. Suppose I am using two functions, let us say g of x then Fourier cosine transform of g of x I will take this as g c of s this is for my convenience nothing wrong in it similarly if you are using for sine I am going to say it as capital f s of s and capital g s of s now the formula for Fourier cosine transform is going to be always between 0 to infinity square root of 2 by pi f of x cos s x dx now you would have guessed what is the formula for fourier sine transform instead of cos sx you will be getting sin sx the inverse fourier cosine transform it's going to be very simple just replace f of x here and push this fc to the other side my inverse fourier cosine transform is f of x is equal to square root of 2 by pi 0 to infinity fc of s cos sx ds as like the fourier transform we can see fourier cosine transform dx for inverse fourier cosine transform ds here we have small f of x in fourier cosine transform in inverse we have capital fc of s now we are going for parcels identity if you have only one function i can write like this f of x whole square dx the other side fc of s whole square ds suppose if you have two functions f of x and g of x just now i said the fourier cosine transform for f of x is fc of s and the fourier cosine transform for g of x is gc of s and i can use the formula like this now in the similar way i can express the fourier sine transform you can just have a look on it now before going to the problem we need some prerequisite e power isx it is very tough to deal as it is. By the formula, we know that e power i n theta is cos 
n theta plus i sin n theta. If it is e power minus i n theta, I can write it as cos n theta minus i sin n theta. The same thing we can apply for e power i s x. I can write it as cos s x plus i sin s x. And some formula which we use for our problem solving. We know that cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sin square theta as well as 2 cos square theta minus 1. We use in this format like 1 minus cos theta. We know that 1 minus cos 2 theta from here it is nothing but 2 sin square theta. For 1 minus cos theta I can write it as 2 sin square theta by 2. If you are getting problem like 1 minus cos as it is going to be 2 sin square as by 2. Next very very important prerequisite recall our odd function and even function. We did lot in unit a function f of x is said to be odd function. If I replace x by minus x, I will be getting minus f of x. Then it is said to be an odd function. We know several examples. x, x cube, x power 5. All the x power odd terms are odd functions. And sin x is going to be an odd function. Next, even function. If I replace my f of x by minus x, still I am getting the same f of x. Then it is said to be an even function. x power 2, x power 4, x power 6, etc. Constants then mod x, cos x, all are even functions. And very very important property, if there is an integral between minus a to a, f of x dx, if my f of x is an odd function, my answer is immediately 0. If my function is an even function, I can write it as 2 times 0 to a, f of x dx. This property we are going to use throughout our unit. Okay students, let us go into a simple problem with keeping all these prerequisites in our mind. Find the Fourier transform for f of x at the interval mod x less than or equal to a. Do you remember students what is mod x less than or equal to a? When you take a real line, I am taking minus a to a. Mod x less than or equal to a is nothing but x lies between minus a to plus a. That means the yellow region which is shaded is mod x less than or equal to a. Then mod x greater than a means the region right to the a and left to the minus a. That means from a to infinity and minus a to minus infinity is mod x greater than a. And this region is going to be mod x less than or equal to a. This is very basic. Let us go into the problem. Find the Fourier transform for the function f of x and hence we have to do two deductions. So let us do this one by one. As usual we are going to solve the problem in a systematic way. Always my step one is Fourier transform. This is a very very important step where we are going to find capital F of S in terms of some function of S. So this is my crucial step. Then according to the deduction either I am going to use my inverse Fourier transform or Parswell's identity. Sometimes we use both. For example, see this problem. I have two deductions. I am going to use both of this. Inverse Fourier transform and Parswell's identities are going to be very very easy because there we are not going to do much integration. Just we are going to analyze and adjust the problem. Okay, let us go into the problem. Step 1. Write the Fourier transform formulae and we know that my f of x is 1 and it will work between the interval minus a to a. So I will write like this. Now instead of integrating like this, substitute the value of e power i s x which is known to us simply cos s x plus i sin s x. We know that cos s x is an even function and sin s x is an odd function. I will make this as 0 in the interval minus a to a. Cos s x is an even function. I can write this as 2 times 0 to a cos sx dx. Now I can write this as 2 by square root of 2 pi 0 to a cos sx dx. Simplifying we get square root of 2 by pi integral 0 to a cos sx dx. Integration of cos sx is going to be sin sx by s in the limit 0 to a. When I apply lower limit it is going to be 0. Only my upper limit exists. Therefore my capital f of s is square root of 2 by pi sin a s by s and it is easy to see it is an even function because 
sin is an odd function and in the denominator s is an odd function so odd function by odd function is going to be an even function so we found capital f of s next our task is to find the deductions sin t by t dt and sin t by t all square dt at the limit 0 to infinity for this i am going to use inverse fourier transform let us write the formula and we know that capital f of s from step 1 substitute and we will be getting like this but actually i want to detect sin t by t dt now comparing these two comparing these two i can find some extra data like e power minus isx a etc etc so let us clear one by one my aim is to get sin t by t so e power minus isx is not needed for me so i'll put x equal to 0 then we'll be getting e power 0 is 1 that is eliminated and here one extra a is there i'll put a equal to 1 the problem solved so it will become simply sin s by s but i need sin t by t so i will take s equal to t and i will substitute ds equal to dt now almost the problem is solved i'll cancel this root 2 with root 2 root pi and root pi is going to be 1 by pi now when i substitute all these things i'll be getting like this even in the lhs i'll be getting f of 0 so f of 0 is equal to 1 by pi because root 2 root 2 get cancel root pi into root pi is pi minus infinity to infinity sin t by t dt now we know that f of x is 1 at the interval minus a comma a our value for x is 0 so f of 0 is also 1 in the left hand side i'll be getting 1 1 is equal to 1 by pi minus infinity to infinity sin t by t dt see this sin t by t sin t is an odd function and t power 1 is also an odd function so odd function by odd function is going to be an even function so if the function is even according to our property we are going to say this as 2 times 1 by pi 0 to infinity sin t by t dt that is our deduction taking this 2 by pi to the other side we will be getting integral 0 to infinity sin t by t dt is pi by 2 hence we proved the first deduction now for the next deduction obviously we have only one choice that is my parcels identity let us write the formula for parcels identity and substitute capital f of s and small f of x so small f of x is 1 at the interval minus a comma a i am directly substituting this now simplifying this because we have whole square i'll be writing 2 by pi minus infinity to infinity sin a s by s ds on the right hand side minus a to a dx now as we shall i want to eliminate unwanted data because i want only 0 to infinity sin t by t whole square dt let us put a equal to 1 then it will become sin s by s and i want to change s to t so put s equal to t ds equal to dt then the problem will be converted like this 2 by pi minus infinity to infinity sin t by t whole square dt minus 1 to 1 dx now i am going to apply the property because my left hand side is whole square it is going to be even function right hand side i have just a constant 1 into dx that is also even function so applying the property i'll be getting 2 times 2 by pi right hand side 2 times 0 to 1 dx now i'll cancel this 2 and i'll bring this 2 by pi to the other side so integral dx is going to be x at the limit 0 to 1 that is going to be 1 therefore i'll be getting 0 to infinity sin t by t whole square dt is also pi by 2 so hence we deduce two deductions thanks for watching subscribe to our channel and share to your friends see you in the next video bye bye